Good afternoon. Good morning. Good night. Whatever time it is that you're listening to this, wherever you're listening to this, we're excited to have you. Yes, we are. I am your host, Pastor Pinewood. I'm BZ. And we are excited. Number five. This is. Number five. Uh, we've been rocking and rolling with these and having a really, really good time putting them together. We are sure hoping that you are enjoying listening to them. Yeah. I would invite you to tell your friends and let them know about the podcast. Also, you can find us on all the socials, Facebook and Instagram primarily. And you can find us at FWTG Podcast. So fraternize with these guys' podcast, but just abbreviate it. And you should be Furga. able to find it. What is it? Furga. <laughs> Do we roll the R's in America? Well, it's you roll the W. Oh. Because it's America. <laughs> uh, also, you could probably just type in Fraternize with these guys on all of those sites and you'd be able to pull them up. Yeah, usually that works. Usually it works. And so what we're trying to do, especially on Facebook, um, is just kind of build a little community. Like-minded people. Maybe not so like-minded people. Yeah, arguments are good. Arguments are good. Even Healthy. Uh, we even invite the Todd Toms to come out. Uh, well, to an extent. We will block you. I mean... Todd Time is supposed to be joining us. That's right. That's right. We're supposed to have a phone call from old Todd Tom today. Yeah, we'll uh, see how that plays out. We'll let him know that uh, he only gets three chances. Three. And then and then he's permanently blocked. I was gonna give him one. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll meet in the middle and we'll call it we'll call it two chances. Yeah, right, two first. Two chances. Well, uh, anyway. We've really had a good time doing this, so hope you enjoy it as well. Share the heck out of it. We're just getting started, and we'd love to pick up some traction. And uh, send us your advice, send us your input, and questions. questions. All questions, for sure. You can email us at theseguysquestions at gmail.com. Okay, good. I don't know why, but I had a stroke and yeah. a brain well, fart. That will happen. Uh, did you do 413 nuggies? I, I tried not to, but they're so addicting. Yeah, that will you happen. Just, you, you eat one chicken McNugget, you got to eat the rest I mean, of them. You just got to keep going. And if you got 400 in front of you, then... I mean, you just, you got to stroke it. And they're so small, like they can't have any calories or anything. I'm he's stroking. <laughs> Clarence Carter. Oh, man. I haven't heard that in a long uh, time. That's a good tune. We should all go. We should pause this right now. And Kay. go and listen to that song. All right. Uh, well, pause it. Okay, paused. Dude, we weren't kidding. Yep. We paused it. We, we most certainly it did. And we listened to the whole thing. We looked it up and listened to the whole thing. And by the way, you should go on YouTube and look up that song because the music video is it's wild ridiculous it's <laughs> absolutely ridiculous it's uh clarence carter featuring jim hansen yes uh, <laughs> on acid yes on acid that was fantastic i'm really glad we did that yeah i know yeah, I, was, I feel better so the first time i heard that song um uh, was driving to colorado with my aunt oh boy and she had it on a on a burned cd like that she had made <laughs> on napster or something and and she had that song and she had the rodeo song oh boy it was Why? fantastic, and we listened to that song probably 50 times. That's amazing. It was good stuff. And as a young man listening to that song for the first time, I was mortified. <laughs> that you were doing it with your aunt. <laughs> and intrigued. You know, I mean, you know, it was... Uh, hey, touche. Yeah, you know, growing pains. When in Rome. When <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, great song. Anyway, all of that to say... You should definitely check us out and uh, tell yes. your friends because we are we are all stars when it comes to this podcasting thing. We be stroking. We be <laughs> <laughs> on episode five already. There. Woo! Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about to begin before we go anywhere else. Uh, Brandon has gotten into a hobby. Uh oh. And, um, I think. Oh goodness! I think you've really been enjoying it thus far, man. You want to talk about the hobby of man hobbies? A man hobby. It's just a man hobby. Okay. Smoking. Smoking. I be smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that works really well, actually. Yes. So uh, if we didn't even plan that. No, we didn't. We That's totally awesome. didn't. And, and we're not talking about uh, illicit substances. We're not talking no. about cigars. Although I wish I had a cigar uh, right now. But we oh. don't, and that's okay. Uh, maybe, maybe later. 
Yeah, maybe. That actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe we'll be little... smoking. Yeah. We, uh, what, what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about smoking meats, man. Oh, the meats. Yeah. So what kind of smoker did you uh, indulge in? Well, um, like we had talked about, um, I think it was last week's episode about uh, being adults and buying Christmas presents for ourselves all year. That's right. Um, Without spousal approval. I actually, I, I felt obligated to get spousal approval on this one. Okay, all right. And uh, she graciously said yes after six months of begging. Wow, six months. Yeah, and a closet remodel. That's all it took. <laughs> mm. So, hey. So you gave up a baby and a closet remodel to get the smoker. A smoker. Yeah. I hope you got a good one. Oh, I did. Okay, what'd you get? I got the uh, Green Mountain Grill. Okay. Daniel Boone. Um, Pro. Hmm. It's, it's got the whiffies, and I uh, just, I freaking love that smoker. So this is a this is a cheater smoker. It's a pellet smoker. Okay. Okay, so uh, a cheater smoker. I mean, you can call it what you will. It's still a smoker. But you have to sit. In the house. In luxury. And, I, and press buttons you on know, your phone. You know, camping used to be going outside and roughing it. Yeah, that's that's the people, definition of camping. People started bringing campers, <laughs> and then it just got crazier with glamping. Okay, all right. Now this is just this is the camping world. This is the glamping and the smoking. Okay, I can't I can't make a a conjunction here between glamping and smoking. This is the luxury world of smoking, especially when we're in temperatures that we're dealing with now. Yeah, it's chilly. Yeah, no, it's cold. Yeah, and it's cold. Thankfully, the wind's only blowing about 45 miles an hour now. Well, that's one of the luxuries of West Texas. That's true. That's <laughs> it's true. always, if it's not blowing 40 miles an hour... It's probably the apocalypse. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, we used to play golf, and that was one of the jokes. Yep. That you get probably two to three days max of the year yeah. to play golf in nice weather. Yep. Oh, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Fishing the same way. Uh-huh. Yeah. So so, so smoking in luxury. Yes. Okay. And by luxury, it means I just get to put all the meats on and set temperatures on my phone, and I can monitor the temperatures of the meat with uh, Wi-Fi. That's nice. Uh, it's amazing. Schmudgery. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I like it. No schmudgeries. Well, let, let me tell you how I have to smoke. I Old have school. a stick smoker, uh-huh. and I have to sit outside and uh-huh. watch it and uh, watch the temperature gauge, make sure it's not too hot and too cold. And if it is, then I have to either put coals in or take coals out. Yeah. And I have to have a fire outside of the smoker constantly going. Uh-huh. And uh, usually for more than 10 hours. You know what I have to do? I don't. I have to sit on my couch while I'm watching TV. <laughs> and I get a notification when the smoker hits temp. So that sounds Because I get awesome. to tell it what temperature I want it at. Right. So once it hits that temp, I get a notification. So the question becomes, are you really smoking? You damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, because the end result you is... have literally tasted the food. <laughs> all right, all right. So tell me, tell me what are some of your favorite uh, cuts that you've smoked so far? I I've got to say probably my favorite thing and the recipe that I've done oh, probably fifteen times already is burgers. Oh, nice! I have a bomb recipe right now. I will say, smoke burgers. We're yeah. out of this world. Oh, they're, it's, it's so disappointing coming from eating all the fast food in my life that I have. Mm. and Which is substantial. Uh, about 413. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 412. I'm on the verge. You're on the verge of death. <laughs> if y'all don't recognize that, uh, that's a throwback. That's to, a throwback to the OG Numero Uno episode. Yeah, very first episode. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so... All of those. What, what else? You got you got hamburgers for sure. Oh God! And most I've, smokers out there rolling their eyes because that's like, I don't know. It's like kitty play. Nah, who cares? I don't really care either. I mean, it's it's tasty and it keeps us from having to order out. That's fair. All the time. That's fair. 
And so it makes our, our dining bills substantially cheaper. Yeah. And, you know, you can go down to the grocery store. They got those pre-cut, pre-rolled uh, hamburger patties and throw yeah, those, those things. Garbage. Well, they'll do in a pinch. I mean, that'll do. And, and the that'll s- do, pig. <laughs> <laughs> and the smoked uh, pre-made hamburger patty is much better than almost anything you buy in a restaurant. Oh yeah, that's that's for sure. So, but no, we've done burgers. Um, <laughs> we did a cake. You smoked a cake? Yeah. Well, it was it was a dump cake. A what? A dump cake. Okay. So my wife gets this uh, amazing uh, strawberry rhubarb pie filling. And then does like a, a butter cake mix, and then just throw sticks of butter. Well, not sticks, but uh, you should have just left that it sticks. That was intriguing. Yeah, sticks of butter, <laughs> and then we just threw it in the smoker for oh god, like an hour and a half, two hours. Nice, and it was phenomenal. Of course, I used like a a fruit wood. Okay, um, and it was it was amazing. I loved it. Sounds um, great. Yeah, it, it really was. Um, so the other crazy thing we did, uh, probably my my crowning achievement thus far is I took a block of uh, Kobe Jack cheddar. Nice. And smoked it and turned it into a, uh, I think it was probably an 8-inch by 10-inch by half-inch thick Cheez-It. Nice. It was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a smoker, you owe it to yourself to get a little tin or aluminum pan that's small, throw a block of cheese in it. Any block. Any block. I, I mean, well, I don't know. Maybe not Velveeta. You go, I do got a good Velveeta recipe in the smoker, though. I find that hard to believe. No. So. Oh, like queso. We'll come back to that one. Okay. All right. Fair, fair enough. I recommend Kobe Jack because it honestly tasted exactly like a cheese it and oh, I had I had a massive cheese it and I I'm a fat kid so <laughs> fat kids do love cheese I was in heaven All right now um, how much of the block did you eat in one sitting The entire thing <laughs> <laughs> Didn't poop for a week Fraternize with these guys does not recommend eating an entire block of cheese in one sitting uh, Fraternize with these guys is brought to you by Bino <laughs> 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 and the EpiPen. And Epi. Well, what is the, no, oh, what's the what's the thing that you do whenever you have a heart attack? The like the little electrode things. The uh, defibrillator. There you go. That's what we're brought to you by. We're, we're brought brought to you by an AED, <laughs> an automatic electric defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, uh, possibly yeah. <laughs> You can tell we're just starting out in podcast world because we have like these huge dreams and uh, everybody could potentially be a sponsor. Hey, yeah, that's true. Yeah, all I mean, you got to do is rise and check. We'll talk right. about it. Yep. Most certainly. Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I will say uh, we're sitting here in the barn. Uh, yes. We're right outside the farm. And uh, earlier this year when it was still warm outside and we had grass, mm-hmm. I had raised uh, 30 meat chickens. Mm-hmm. And these meat chickens, uh, we move them every day and they sit in a little, a little shelter. And you move that shelter every day, so they get fresh grass every day. We fed them organic food, and we're supposed to butcher at nine and a half weeks, and we didn't butcher until 11 weeks. So we didn't really have a chicken at the end. It was a turkey. It was closer to a small turkey. As a matter of fact, the turkey that I bought for my wife and I to eat this year was smaller than our biggest chicken. I believe it. And so they're big chickens. And I actually gave you one of those chickens. Yes. And you smoked it. We did. Actually, we rotisseried it. Oh, well, we tried well, we broke the rotisserie because it was a fat chicken. It was a huge chicken. <laughs> but uh, and tell them about your rotisserie <clears throat> stick. I mean, it's not like a, a flimsy piece of metal. No, it, it was it was a pretty substantial chunk of metal, and it was it was a square rod that had the the two, I guess, forks. Yeah, the that, holds, that yeah. hold the chicken, and the. Kind of an awkward design. They had uh, one side had a screw, and one of them was threaded, so you just kind of screwed the two pieces that's together right. in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where it gave way because it was a fat bastard chicken. Yeah, it was huge. And, huge. you know, I mean, they, I actually, um, I returned that, and the day that I returned it, the place that I got my smoker, they were like, oh, actually, uh, here, take this one. This is the new model. 
And now it's a solid rod, so nice. we're going to need to get me another chicken. Okay. Chicken turkey. All right. So we can give it another ghost. A chicken. A chicken. Okay. All right. Well, I got I got a couple left. Beauty. So we can definitely do that. But I have to be included like I was last time. Cause I don't know. We'll see about that. Even with all of the failure... It was it's so still delicious. phenomenal. <laughs> like it literally fell down and sat in the smoker for a couple hours, and it was. And we still, had no idea. Still great. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was really good. Very good. Um, so I, I guess I'm gonna have to get in the market for uh, for one of these smokers. You really do. All right. All right. Well, uh, I recommend Green Mountain Grills. They're not a sponsor yet, <laughs> but uh, could be. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and by the way, we've kind of beat that. Uh, dead horse even more dead i don't understand that can you you beat a dead horse uh, anyway we we we've, we've said that a lot that actually is a movie reference is it i believe so because oh, because oh yeah step brothers like everything that we do is a reference, a of, reference some sort. Uh, of some sort we are fairly unoriginal when it comes to that yeah most certainly mainly because we've seen just about every movie yeah yeah it's every movie that's at least decent or better and we've seen some that are not. Yeah, that's fair. We, we have. We quote some that are not. That are still terrible. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you yeah. haven't seen Dad of the Year with Robin Williams, oh, then uh, go out there and watch that. Okay, we're getting way off, uh, yes. Yes, way off base. I think what we need to do is we need to go ahead and go into our uh, libations for the week. I like it. Libations! <laughs> All right, libation. It gets me every time, man. Every I time like, I, I like it, gives me little shivers up my spine. It's good stuff. Libations this time is uh, kind of an old standard, but a twist on an old standard. So when we were kind of getting into broadening our beer drinking horizons, um, yep. Shiner was always right there and yeah. the flagship brand. One of those beers you could always pick up and just be satisfied with. Uh-huh. It always treated us well. Well, Shiner has a holiday beer that they come out with. They have a couple, uh, but probably this one is my favorite. This is the Shiner Cheer. Holiday yeah. Cheer. Oh, Holiday Cheer. That's right. Let's go ahead and uh, crack this open, okay. and uh, we'll see what fuss is all about. All right, so on their website, it says uh, holiday traditions come in all shapes and sizes. Ours comes in freshly wrapped bottles and cans. This old world Dunkelweizen is brewed with Texas peaches and roasted pecans. Perfect for cracking open in front of a crackling fire. It's beginning to look a lot like happy hour. That's good. (laughs) It's a good turn of phrase. Uh, Have you been to Shiner, Texas? I have not. So I've been there a couple times, and uh, have you... Sadly, I've driven through Shiner, Texas, and have not stopped. No, I haven't toured the brewery, which is really embarrassing. You disappoint me. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, Immediately, this is a great, wonderful, happy, fruity beer. Yeah, it it is surprising, and it's crazy because Shiner's they do their their seasonal beers, um, and they also this last summer. They or I guess this most previous summer, they did a. Uh, it was called the Texas Heat Wave. Yes, the and six it, pack. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It was a twelve pack. Okay, uh, but it was it, a combination of what? Yeah, they were, okay. it had three of them. It was uh, the strawberry blonde, which is phenomenal. I love that one. Okay. Um, then they had their mango. Kolsch, right, which is pretty good, decent, and then they had their peach hefeweizen, I believe, is what it was. And if I'm not mistaken, we took those this year fly fishing. Yes. Okay. We, so we had yeah. all of those. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we had all, right. all of them. And I gotta say, the the peach is much more prominent in flavor on this one than it was on the actual peach beer. Peach beer. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, and I will say, I I don't. I don't have any pecan taste coming through at all. I really didn't. It's, it's almost all peach. Yeah. Which I'm not complaining about. If I was going to say one thing about it, it's one-dimensional. Yeah, it is very. It, it doesn't have any complexity uh, throughout the flavor profile. Yeah, or mouthfeel, or whatever you want to call that. We're not wine drinkers, after all. <laughs> I mean, um, come on now. 
but it is it's fantastic. Um, it so is pretty good beer. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, we're going to do a regular Shiner at some point because I think we have to go ahead and rank that uh, because it's it's you know it's Texas. We we got to yeah, do we got to do Shiner. Have to. Uh, and again, it's one of those beers that is always going to hold up. As far as this particular cheer beer, uh, holiday cheer, I, I'm going to give it a solid 82. Wow. And I'll tell you why. Here's okay. Why. It's one dimensional, and I don't think I would enjoy having it often. Yeah, I I won't disagree with you one bit. Um, I, I was honestly leaning more towards seventy five. Dang, even lower. I thought you were going to go higher. No, because I mean, you're a Peach fan. I am, and I think that's that's what's the most disappointing about. Both of them, this one and and their their summer peach hefeweizen, and it's just it's not peachy I get enough, it. right? And this um, one's almost too much. No, I I disagree. Um, I just you know I I don't know why I I feel it's it's definitely w- one beer from Shiner that I couldn't drink a sixer of, right? Um. Which is saying something. <laughs> well, I've seen you sit down and drink more than six in a row, so I know it could be done. Uh, not of the seasonal <laughs> holiday uh, cheer. I wouldn't put it past you. Well, I mean, depends on how many predecessor beers I had. That's fair. That's a fair point. <laughs> um, I, I, I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a good holiday beer. If you see it and you're kind of struggling with something else uh, as far as not, not finding anything else to buy, definitely pick a six-pack up because it's, yeah. it's solid. It's definitely not... Not a terrible beer. No, I, I don't think I don't think it'd pair well with much. Um, but I could be wrong about that. I feel like it would be good with a peach cobbler. Well, you know, if you want to double peach it. Well, that way you can get some peach flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little peach flavor in your peach beer. Yeah, maybe a little drip of... Uh, Peach essence, essence of F- essence of peach, the essence of peach. Yep. Uh, so good beer, uh, solid beer, but not not gonna take take my breath away. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. I feel like that's kind of the way with Shiner all the way across the board. Like it's just solid. Yes. It's always it, it's it's a standard beer, it's, and it's definitely a, a higher than middle of the road. Yep, yep. It's gonna be better than any of your uh, your other. Texas staples. Yeah. Like the champagne of beer and, uh, oh. yeah, all those wonderful, wonderful. All right. Well, uh, for that ep- that thing that we all come here for, how about we go right into four questions? Four questions. I like it. Four questions. We got some good ones today. Yeah. Uh, a couple of maybe actual questions and a couple of absolutely ridiculous <laughs> Todd Tom questions, which I always love. Uh, I'm going to let you... Tom-toms. End with the, the, the thinker, for sure, because uh, I like that question. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. I'm going to start with one uh, that will make you think a little bit, and it's going to go right into the, uh, the beer question. So this is posted by Anonymous, and um, it, it, they could have left their name because it's a legitimate question. Uh, their question is, why is beer more popular than wine in the U.S.? Wine has more alcohol and tastes better, so what gives? That's the question. Huh. Interesting. That's a very one-sided question because that's just their opinion. It's like your opinion, It's just man. like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I would be curious to know where they get the information also. Yeah. Like just based on sales alone or... Uh, where are they getting that that information from? Who's well, to say it's more popular? I think it's because wine is ridiculously expensive. Some of it is very expensive. Some of it's not expensive, and you definitely and it can tastes, tell. <laughs> it definitely tastes like it's not expensive. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, I kind of prefer my wine out of a box. <laughs> oh, you're classy. <laughs> classy. <laughs> Classing up his joints. He's a classy gentleman over here. <laughs> <laughs> the um, old box wine. The box of wine in the bottom shelf of the refrigerator where, with the easy access handle. Oh, hell yeah, with the little spout. Yeah, that's yeah, where it's at. Boy. That's where it's at. See, uh, and I thought I was going to have a classy answer saying the uh, gallon jug of Carlo Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
I don't uh, even know if that's wine. Oh, the Midianites. Yes. What, really? Oh, yeah. Gosh. Bro, you could, back then, me and Cheeks and my brother, we could get us a gallon of... A gallon? A gallon. Like it that literally, huge glass It bottle. literally comes in a glass gallon jug. And we'd get the sangria. Ugh. And then you get a three liter of Sprite. Yeah. And you mix them two puppies together, and it makes a very vibrant, dark purple vomit. <laughs> <laughs> but you can buy the Carlo Rossi for that gallon was only like five bucks. Good Lord. Yeah. And you, you Irish guys just drank that up. Ah, we destroyed it. Ugh. Us, uh, us Scots, we have a little more refined taste than that. We prefer ours just... In the refrigerator in a box. I believe in the first episode we touched on your <laughs> refined dumpster fire of a palate. <laughs> well, when it comes to wine, uh, probably is. Well, and see, I've I've done a handful of wine tastings with several different wineries, and of course, Lubbock. We actually have uh, four, four or five pretty popular wineries, right? And. I think I find myself shift more towards the sweeter wines. Okay. Just because that dry stuff, my God. See, and that's... Yes. If I'm going to drink wine, that's what I prefer. A dry wine? Yeah. That's... Like yeah. The, less, the less sweet, the better. And kind of the same way with, with beer as well. I don't, I don't really like a sweet beer. So Interesting. We, we talked about that last week on the stouts. Yeah. You know, some stouts are just way, way too sweet. Sure, sure. Uh, and this this cheer, as good as it is, it's it's almost to the sweet factor that it's, it's too much for me. Interesting. Uh, so uh, I do like some of the answers. Uh, most of them are just saying uh, because beer is cheaper. That that well, that's fair. You know, and if you're if you're drinking. Not necessarily for taste, but for, uh, for an, an end result. Intoxication. Then, uh, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's the way to go. I think, what is it? The Psycho Sticks have a song that uh, kind of answers this question. Does it? Beer or wine? <laughs> what are the lyrics to that song? Beer is good. Beer is good. <laughs> beer is good. And stuff. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like we have a bunch of Hank Hills. Yes. Like, that's why beer is more popular. Well, yeah. I mean, you can buy a 30-pack of uh, one of the top three garbage pills, and it's, what, 18, 20 bucks? I mean, I, mean, I haven't bought a 30-pack of beer. It's been a long time. In years. Just because of the fact that... They're terrible? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, even if you could buy really good beer in 30 packs, like, why? You wouldn't. No. I mean, the, a really, really good beer is going to have a higher alcohol content. Yep. And it'll mess you up. Well, if you get going on it, for sure. Well, that's what I do. Well, you have your moments. That's and fair. We, we, keep it, we keep it pretty PG most of the time. Yeah. One yeah, beer. Yeah, we... Bible says we one, can one or, sample. One or two. One or two or 12. <laughs> one, you know, usually with me, it's just one right after the other. <laughs> uh, well, so my, my, to, go to, ahead. To answer the question, read the question again. Okay, the question is just why is beer more popular than wine in the United States? Because it tastes better. <laughs> ah, well, lots because, of people disagree with that. Well, and, and that's fair. I think the variety in flavor palettes... Are, are different. Okay, explain. Well, now you got me thinking because I was going to say that you've got more varieties of beers. So you got a Hefeweizen. Sure. You got Porters, but the wine, Stouts. The wine guy would argue. Reese Leagues that you've got. Sure. Your Merlots and Cabarets and Pinots. And Peanut Grigiots. Yeah, all that, all that good refined <laughs> French stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't like it because it's French. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just as we find wonderful questions online, sometimes we find wonderful answers. Oh, I love it. And Already. Uh, the best answer I, I found, and there's a bunch on this particular thread, but the best answer is from a guy named Griggle, which oh. is, you know, I So like he's it. probably French. Maybe. Maybe. Um, 
his answer was because wine, gen- and I'm just going to read this exactly the way he, he says it. Get that verbatim. Because wine generally tastes like damn it. <laughs> <laughs> generally tastes like damn it. Now, I don't now know. is there an exclamation no, point at the it's end? Not, it just ends it? Nope. It's a period at the end and, uh, and no, no capitals. Just, just all lowercase. And he misspelled damn it. Even better. So How did he spell it? D-A-M-M-I-T. Is that well, how you spell it? No, it's D A M. I don't well, know. I I haven't. Been, I don't. I don't curse very much. Via, I haven't been uh, in a my... spelling bee in <laughs> sixty eight years, but I don't recall that one being on our on our word list. No, probably not. National spelling bee is probably going to leave that one. Yeah. Uh, could you use that in a word, sir? Damn it, <laughs> Janet. <laughs> Oh, the references, man, I'm just coming you. out. We got them. I tell you, we, we should have a contest with our listeners if they could name every reference that we bring <laughs> up. And we'd give them the podcast. We'll give, we'll give you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> you can join us on a segment of uh, Lobby So far, we've had a bunch already in this, this yeah, episode. Yeah, this one alone is yeah. just rock solid. Yeah, It's going a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and end this All one. Right. Um, the reason why beer is more popular than wine in the United States is because we're American. Yes. I can't imagine the people in the Tea Party, and I'm talking about the Boston Tea Party, not the ridiculous 2011 Tea Party, like <laughs> freaking Sam Adams. <laughs> Can you imagine Sam Adams trying to release, you know, a wine company? It wouldn't <laughs> fly. It wouldn't fly. I mean, his Boston Lager. <laughs> yeah, you you, you got to run around and tell people that the British the are coming. Red are coming. And you can't be drinking wine while you do that, but you can be drinking a nice, tasty ale. And you got to throw the beer bottle. That's right. <laughs> Whilst on horseback. I think I think the I think that's the answer because we're American. Because yep, we're American. All right, good. I like that one. All that right, so we'll go right into. Uh, I think you got you got some doozies today. I did. So I usually yeah. get some decent questions, and you usually get some decent questions, but you definitely kind of one up to me cake. on this. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That's... What's your first question? All right. So what is one app on your phone that you can't live without? That's a good question. <laughs> it's a tough question, too, because do we only get to pick one? It says one. Okay. Well, let me just, as a caveat, Okay. I could live without all of my apps like six years ago because I didn't have a phone capable of having That's apps. That's fair. So <laughs> <laughs> I have lived the predominant amount of my life without having any apps. Uh, so I guess I could live without any of them. However, if I could only pick... So what's the deal? If, if there's, there's literally no information on it. That's All it. it says is, what is one app on your phone that you can't live without? Man, I don't know. I feel, I feel like there's a couple. Like, for sure, YouTube. Like, I, I go to YouTube. I don't know why I keep saying like like a freaking valley girl. Like, I like, I like, I got a like, I tell you, I tell you, like, I like, I like. I go to YouTube all the time. Like all the time? Like all <laughs> the time. For... Advice for how to do stuff, for movies, for music, for podcasts. I go to YouTube for all kinds of stuff. It would you know be, I do that off of your phone or off off of desktop? Well, sure, I or could, laptop? but I don't. I almost predominantly use my phone to do that for YouTube. Yeah, so you you just have a little red box that's a YouTube phone. You get. Phone, messaging, and YouTube, and <laughs> that's it. If I if I had to choose, like one, there again, go again, one that like. I couldn't live without, I'm gonna have to go with with Tube of the U. <sighs> See, I'm thinking of the grand scheme of things. Okay. Web browser. Web. <laughs> <laughs> I can get YouTube on the web browser. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, that's a that's a fair workaround. Yeah. I think it, I think it defeats the purpose, the spirit of the question. Well, you know. they should have said it. Well, I think that's a good point. I mean, they should have. They, they should wanted, have specified. They wanted the one. All right. I gave you the one. Okay. All right. Fair point. Um, However, if we're gonna nix that one, yeah, that's kind of cheating, just a little bit. I would say. Uh, Is that even considered an app? Well, I consider it an app. <laughs> 
for the process of me making it work for this question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it holds up in court for sure. Yeah, it's in the Geneva Convention. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely an <laughs> app that you download, uh, but it, it's circumvents the the spirit of the question. Uh, well, oh gosh, I don't know. I I would venture to say uh, it it would have to be either. My Samsung Music, Pandora, or my Amazon Music. And I would probably go towards Amazon Music just because of I, that's all I do. I travel so much that I'm always listening to music or podcasts. And I would go insane if I didn't have music. That's fair. That's fair. I, I do listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, mostly on YouTube and and um, and regular iTunes podcast. Gotcha. That's most where I find it. I I don't even have Spotify on my phone, which I should probably get it because yeah, uh, you can't should. listen to Joe Rogan anymore. Well, you can't listen to our podcast until you get that one too. Well, I guess that's true. <laughs> we can get it on iTunes. Yeah, uh, you can get it on iTunes. By the way, you should check us out on iTunes and uh, leave us a good review. We'd really appreciate it. How's about that segue? Yeah, it was yeah. good. I liked it. <laughs> Uh, I do find, so our job fields are totally different, and you travel a bunch and have a lot of, what will we say, passive time, where, I, you're, where you're actively doing something, but you're also... I call it windshield time. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, anything you get paid for. Yeah. It works. Feels good. I have a lot of office time, and you know me well enough. I hate office time. Uh-huh. And I hate sitting in an office. Usually, I can, I can go about hour and a half spells sitting in the office, and I've got to do something else. Right, and a lot of times, what that consists of is going on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Parler and all these other social media apps. And I know that that is an addiction, and I know that I spend a lot of time doing that, a lot, lot, a lot, lot of time. <laughs> so, I should probably live without those. Yeah, but um, I'm not going to. But Man. I should. Why? Uh, I do have them in a folder on my phone that says addiction. Because they, <laughs> I have to I have to make sure that I understand and know what I'm doing when I oh, do that. That's Cause, fair. Because I'll eat up hours just sitting there browsing, and it's that's a gigantic waste of time. Yes, it is. So I don't know. Uh, I think the question needs to be kind of skimmed down better. Because one app I can't live without, yeah, it's answerable. If I only had to have one app, that would be a whole nother turn of phrase to the question. And I think would elicit a different. I don't know though. If I can only have one app, you can only have one app. You're probably still going to go with YouTube. I'm just going to do everything on YouTube <laughs> that I can on on just about everything else. I, I would I, I would go know. music, Amazon Music, Amazon Music. See, I don't have Amazon Music. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's just like all the other platforms. Um, of course, the one I have is the subscription side of it, so okay. it's unlimited. Okay. Um, no commercials. No commercials. You can. Find playlists. You can do podcasts. You can download full albums. Nice. Is that included with your Amazon Prime? Uh, I believe it's an additional cost. Okay. Sorry. Uh, you gave me a cigar. I'm not used to. Yeah, we both got cigars, and uh, they're good. I'm really digging this one. What did you give me? So I gave you, uh, for, for the non-alcoholics, it's uh, Cinnamon. Oh, Fireball? Yeah, Fireball. He gave you uh, a Fireball yeah. cigar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mr. Beasy's not a, a, a normal cigar smoker for a lot of different reasons, but number one, uh, he has asthma, and he'll die if he has uh, too many cigars. Yeah, that could do it. Yeah, so uh, I'm smoking a pissed-off Kristoff, and it's very good, very tasty. Uh, so You're a pissed-off Kristoff. I think, um, I don't know, I think we've kind of beat that one to death a little bit. Yeah. But... Um, It'd be tough to just choose one because, I mean, I've got like four screens worth of apps on my phone. <laughs> I think I use like three and a half of those screens. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I use four to seven apps the most of the time. Wow. And then the rest of them I just kind of periodically use. Like I still have a metronome and tuner app on my phone, even though I very rarely venture into music anymore. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. It's just hard to give those things up. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. All right. We ready for number three? Hit it. All right. Um, by the way, before we go on to number three, if you're listening out there and you have an app that you can't live without, 
we'd love to hear about it. Drop us an email. Go over and put it up on uh, Facebook. We would enjoy hearing what you have to say. I have a great question, and I'm going to read it the way that it's written. Okay, so this is, I think, I think there has to be something read into it a lot of times, but not okay. this one. This one's got to yeah. be verbatim. Okay. Right. This is also posted by Anonymous, and uh, there's a reason for that. Okay. Okay, here is what it says in its, um, in, I'm going to quote it exactly. Yeah. The question is, why was there no shark attacks when Titanic sank? Okay, that's the question. Okay. It clarifies. They clarify. I don't know the pronoun. Whatever. According. <laughs> Todd, Todd Tom, Tom clarifies. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Todd Tom for sure. Okay. Why Beauty. was there no shark attacks when Titanic sank? According to the great white shark habitat, they live everywhere except North Line. But when Titanic sank, comma, isn't it weird that sharks didn't come up and attacked them when people were splashing a lot? It was also lots of blood. My ears hurt <laughs> from what you just read. So the the gist of the question is, if this is an eight-year-old writing this, I can almost get around the question. That's okay. fair. People in the water, lots splashing of people. Around. Splashing around. I don't know about the blood. I feel like there was a whole bunch of blood in the water. Except for that one guy who fell and hit the propeller on his way, <laughs> his way down. Yeah, the movie. <laughs> yeah, the movie. Yeah, that was historically accurate. I, I'm pretty sure they filmed. Like, that was the original. The thing, yeah. yeah, that was the original film. Yeah, I was on the documentary crew. <laughs> um, so I don't know about the blood in the water, but there were definitely people in the water that were splashing a lot. So why were there no sharks? So what is this? He says great white what? Okay, so according to the great white shark habitat, that's it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming what he's referring to is according to the habitat of the great white shark. Okay. Okay, that would imply that he has great knowledge of the whereabouts of I've, the great white sharks. I've been an ichthyologist for... 18 years now? I don't even know what an ichthyologist is. What did you, you say? try that one again? I don't, I'm going to try it again. Ichthyologist? Okay, is that study it's of a, sharks? A study of fish. Are you sure about that? I'm almost positive. You google it. Okay, we'll have to Google it later. Um, we need a young Jamie. Uh, we do. That'd be great. Hey, if, if you're you, out there and you want a job that doesn't pay anything. Yes, come uh, join us. Yeah, come join us. we would love to have you. So, according to the Great White Shark Habitat, I don't know, he, but he's, he's, and then he says they live everywhere except North Line. There's no article. There's no A or the, it's just North everywhere line. except North Line, which is like a, a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like if we're in Dallas, we're going to go over to North Line. He don't go over to Inglewood. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a shark, I wouldn't go to yeah, Inglewood either. <laughs> Rough um, neighborhoods. Yes, very. Even for sharks. Yeah. Especially great white sharks. Yes. <laughs> Touche, sir. <laughs> Touche. So, a uh, couple of answers. Obvious ones. The Titanic sunk in the... Uh, by the way, sunk? Sank? He said sunk. The I Titanic sunk... Is that like a... a it's one of those hanged. Hung? Yes, I believe so. And uh, Sanked? Let's oh, go with sanked. Okay. The Titanic sank. How about sanked? sancted? <laughs> sanked <laughs> it feels... It rolls off the tongue a little better. Sank, the Titanic sancted. It sancted in the cold North Atlantic Sea, and as sharks need warmer waters, they mm-hmm. had already swum south. Oh, they swum south. They swum south. They didn't swum did? They did not swim did. <laughs> or swum did. They sunk in the cold North Atlantic Sea... Or the Titanic sunk in the cold North Atlantic Sea, and the sharks need warm waters, so they had already swum south, like their geese or something, going oh. south for the winter. Oh, they must be talking about the Canadian great whites. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> and also, I didn't know the North Atlantic Sea was warm during the summer months and <laughs> cold during the winter months. I had no idea. It's water. I mean, I've been an oceanographer for, for uh, <laughs> about two, three years, and uh, we do a lot of temperature readings. Yes. Uh, by the way, if you can pick up on that particular reference, uh, BZ will never stop saying it. That's so exactly right. It doesn't matter. And it's... if you don't pick up on it, I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> so we're losers either way. Yeah, lose, lose. All right. All right. Uh, another answer. The very cold water, comma, sharks do not enjoy, dot, dot, dot. That's it. The very cold water, comma, 
the sharks do not enjoy. Well, dot, dot, dot. That's reasonable. They're a cold blooded animal. And, and, you know, they need warmer waters to regulate their body that is temperature. A, that is a true statement. However, grammar is not becoming of no. these folks, uh, for sure. Yeah, internet people. Okay, my favorite answer to this question. Okay. Okay, we've, we've just gone through the dumpster fire that is the question. This answer, again, from Anonymous. Oh, beautiful. Is, I'm guessing the giant ship sinking might have scared them away. Uh, yeah, that's that's typical. <laughs> um, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic question and answer for him. There's some typical good answers like you know sharks don't swim in in those cold, icy waters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say there is one shark that does hang out in icy waters. Which one is that? It's called the Greenland shark. The Greenland shark. Okay, yep. tell me about that Greenland shark. Uh, it's actually rumored and in the ichthyological community it is the world's oldest shark i think one has been um, aged at like 220 years old it's all this nonsense possibly (laughs) but there is a greenland shark and they get old as shit (laughs) okay well just the fact that they get old doesn't mean they can survive in freaking cold water no they live in greenland that's where they get their name dude well i get it but it doesn't mean there's gonna be Swimming around in the North Atlantic Sea, biting icebergs. Hang on, here we go. Uh, the Greenland shark, also known as the Gurry shark. The uh, what? The Gurney shark? Gurry. Okay. Gurry. I don't know. Uh, let's see the sizes. Um, let's see. Well, let's let's pull up some age. Age span. Holy shit. That was a lot bigger than I was thinking. 392 years old. Wow. Wow. So, uh, so, but possibly one of those sharks is as old as like almost the founding of America. Maybe that's where Methuselah is. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming around with his pet Greenland shark. Pet Greenland shark. All right. Like Poseidon. All right. Uh, this, this is a good conspiracy theory when Robert 2020 says, well, there was a lot of activity, people splashing around, and maybe there were sharks feasting on the dead afterwards. There was just no reported attacks, being that it was late at night and also the beginning of the 19th freaking <laughs> century. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, they didn't have their cameras out posting IGs and Facebook. Oh my God, we just say. I wonder. I wonder what apps they couldn't live without. Uh, probably o- oxygen. Probably o- <laughs> oxygen and a heater. <laughs> <laughs> that heater app comes in handy every yes, once in a while. Yes, it does. Uh, especially if you're that guy trying to get on the 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 door that had plenty of room. Plenty, yes. plenty of room. Get me started. All right. Well, that's good. That was um, a good question. It, I enjoyed that one. Terrible question, but a great banter opportunity. Yes. For sure. Yes. Thanks, All right. trolls. We appreciate it. I'm not even sure he was trolling. Uh, I'm kind of sure that was a legit Todd question. Yep. Old oh, Todd Tom oh, strikes Todd Tom. again. All right. Uh, number four, finally, with a bullet. What you got? All right. This is a goodie. So, prepare yourself. Isn't it better to leave your car unlocked if you don't have any valuable or personal items inside so thieves won't break the windows? They go on to say, I just realized this. I don't have any valuable items laying around in my car. So when I park it, isn't it better to leave it unlocked so thieves could actually see there's nothing of value inside without breaking my windows? It's a good question. That's like it's, that's it's ridiculously. A, it's a really good question. Awesome. That's something I've never even thought about. Okay. All right. So let's let's just put it up for a a circumstantial uh, evidentiary hearing. Okay. You have a 1994 Toyota Corolla with all manual doors, windows, everything, everything. There's no cruise control. I mean, it's a getter done beater car. All right. Runs well. You're happy with it. And you go to work or shopping and parking in the parking lot, and you're faced with the conundrum. There's nothing in it. And there's no tent because, you know, it's a 1994 Toyota <laughs> Corolla. You're not going to dump any money in this thing. So they can see 
all the way in your car. Sure. If you leave the door unlocked, if a, if a thief comes by, sees that there's nothing in there, and the door is unlocked, they're going to open the door, uh-huh. scrounge around, not find anything. Boogie to the next one. Presumably, boogie to the next Probably one. Probably don't have a car alarm on it. Probably not. <laughs> I would assume not. Yeah. Okay, so that's the... Instead of you lock it, same circumstance, you lock it, and they break the window... Just to see you don't have anything in your car. Don't find anything, still go on. Go to the, to the next, next car. Okay. It's a really good question. <laughs> I told you, man. And this... I would I would say the immediate thought was... Always lock your car, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Always lock your car. What if they want to steal it? Well, if they're going to steal it... They're stealing they're it. They're going to steal it, especially if you have a 1994 Toyota Corolla. Those are easy to hotwire. I've been hotwiring cars for <laughs> 82 years, man. <laughs> so... I I don't necessarily fault his logic. The only thing I will say is if you if you have your vehicle unlocked and they do steal your vehicle, then would you be held liable? Because I know they that Texas has that deal now where I. I believe if you have your keys in the car or if it's running or if it's running you actually cannot claim theft charges or, or something ridiculous about okay um, you can't claim insurance off of it because you were at fault for leaving the keys okay made it accessible I, I, for them to steal it I, maybe I would definitely check your insurance policy if you have that insurance, I'd get new insurance because that sounds terrible. I'm pretty sure that's all. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there that's uh that's an insurance sizer <laughs> can help us out. <laughs> oh, insurance sizers. <laughs> uh, another thing, another thing to think about is something I like to say a lot of times. We need to keep the honest people honest, which is you give just enough deterrent to make sure that 99 percent of the time nobody's going to break into your vehicle. And if somebody wants to break into your vehicle anyway, they're going to do it regardless. Sure. And so, like on our on our fishing rigs, yep. we have crossbars that lock down all of the compartments on top with all your rods and reels and everything sure. in it. Sure. Easily, you could cut through that very easily. It's, it, it wouldn't take much effort. Uh-huh. Or you could just break the fiberglass out and get into it. However, yeah. it's not easily done quickly. So you keep the honest people honest by having that, that small amount of deterrent. And so, I'm still going to err on the side of, I'm going to lock my vehicle. Yeah. Being somebody that just had my truck window broke out, and they didn't steal anything, because there wasn't anything to steal. Okay. That is frustrating, because that was $190 I had to pay Ah. to get my window fixed. Okay. So... Had I just left it unlocked, they'd have poked their head in there and be like, oh, this guy's... (laughs) This guy's poorer than we are. Next. (laughs) Oh, wait. He does have five CDs. Oh, Lord. It's ABBA. God. He's got (laughs) ABBA gold. It's got to be his wife's truck. He drives Uh, that car. (laughs) I feel so bad for him. I'm just going to leave it alone. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, This is one of those questions that we would love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Give us um, the feedbacks on what you guys think. Because I don't know. I don't know. And also, I'm so messy and junky, I always have something at least of small value in my pickup. For the most part, I used to, but I just happened to clean my truck out when this happened. That's crazy. Yeah. So they broke in, they didn't take your radio or a computer? Didn't take the radio, didn't take... Well, I didn't have a computer. Well, like your little computer computer chip? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't take that. Wow. So a low-budget thief. Yeah. He was looking for the big-ticket items. Gotcha. Didn't find it. Didn't find nothing. So, I don't know. On that point, if you don't have anything, let them them have a look-see. Okay. I'm with them on leaving it unlocked if you don't have anything in the car. Okay. Because, like you said, if they're going to steal the car, they're going to steal the car. All right. And they'll steal the car with a broken window, or they'll steal the car... Without a broken window. What percentage of 
persons do you think actually carries no valuables in their vehicle? Because uh, I use mine as an extension of my, <laughs> of my bedroom, <laughs> my kitchen, my garage. I mean, there's there's bits and pieces from everything in there. Bits and bulbs. But yeah, there is. There is. It's a... <laughs> It's a disaster area. Sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, two weeks ago, I carried a deer in the back seat of my Suburban. Nice. Yeah, in a tarp. It was, um, <laughs> it was pretty special. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be very... I, uh, this is a small amount of folks, I would say, that carry no valuables in their car. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's kind of... I would say, if you have nothing valuable in your car... Leave it unlocked. Leave it unlocked. All right. I could I can go with that answer. I don't like it. Because hundred and ninety dollars to fix a window. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah, I, I get it. Also, ironically, I leave my front door unlocked like all the time. Well, I mean, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Yeah. It's it's a point of contention in my marriage. Like it's that bad. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So always lock my vehicle. However, you're free to come <laughs> to my house come on in. anytime. <laughs> my little Dotsons might uh, bark you to death, but oh, other than that, grief. you can have your uh, you can have your pick of just about whatever. They'll murder your ears. They will. They are vicious uh, with the barking. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing That's else. it. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay. Well, great round of questions. <sighs> Felt really good. Felt good. Um, I think now, if I'm not mistaken, we have a call from uh, Todd Tom. Is that oh right? God. Is he is trying to he call in like calling in right, right now? now? Yeah, let's uh, let's turn over to him. Oh dang, he really is calling. I didn't I didn't think he was going to call in. Ballsy. All right, let's check in with uh, Mr. Todd Tom. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, is this is this Todd Tom? Yes, he is. I didn't even know how you how in the world did you get this number? <laughs> well, uh, my secrets are my secrets. I've got inside people. Inside people to the podcast that has five episodes. Yes. Okay. I I heard you talking about me. Well, we've talked about you extensively for five episodes. Yes, I've I've heard. Did you did you like it? Or are you offended? Or well, I gotta be honest. You kind of paint me in a bad picture. Mostly because that it's all true. Yeah, I gotta say that's incorrect. Okay. Well, um, let's let's. Let's just talk about something kind of uh, on a brighter note. What what did you do for New Year's? Well, you know, I just spent the night and uh, left some one star reviews. <laughs> Who did you leave one star reviews for? Oh, you know, restaurants, uh, places that kicked me out. Now, are these restaurants that you actually visited and dined in? Of course not. Oh. They wouldn't let me in. <laughs> why? Why wouldn't they let you in? <laughs> I mean, Jack, I don't even know. <laughs> it's racism. It's so, it's racism. What what race are you? <laughs> Actually, I I don't feel like I got the liberty to tell you. Oh, okay, all right. So it, it's you know what? I'm not even going to go down that particular rabbit hole. Yes, sir. Do you ever do you ever leave more than a one star? Is there any, like ever two or three star ratings that you leave? Yes, yes. Um, my mother's kitchen. Um, she lets me stay with her, so I give her a three star review. Do you do you by chance live in her basement? Uh, no, actually, she gave me the attic. So you live in your mother's attic. Yes. And you give one star reviews to places that you've never visited. Yes. And have you by chance given fraternize with these guys a one star rating? Yes. Okay. Uh, but you do listen to the show. You no. Know, you don't listen to the show. Of course not. But you call into the show. Well, because you're talking about me. Okay. So you, you don't listen. You gave us a one-star review, and you call into the show. You cannot argue with my logic. I, I, I'm just asking questions, sir. Okay. This conversation is over. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Wow. Well, that was... Um, i tell you what, man. That was, that was quite entertaining. Jesus. That so, guy's... Uh... He sounded like he had some issues. He's a little something, eh? Yeah. Um, I liked him. Seemed like a <laughs> like a real winner. <laughs> I did I did enjoy knowing a little bit more about him. The old Todd Tom. It, it will help me make fun of him more in the future. <sighs> Todd Tom. Uh, 
Uh, I was not expecting the attic. I, w- I was definitely for sure he lived in the basement. I didn't think he had a home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed he got off uh, so so early. Uh, of course, I'm not surprised. Well, you shouldn't have struck a chord with him. I guess not. I, I was Clearly, really, you upset him. <laughs> I was really wanting him to answer the question about the sharks. Uh, uh, but, you know, that's hey, just the way it goes. <laughs> say that, <it up>, <laughs> Well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Well, well I'll tell you clearly what. he listens. I guess. And maybe he'll maybe he'll reach know. out again. Maybe. All right. Well, uh, fingers crossed, Mr. Todd. Tom, uh, we we don't enjoy you. We don't love you, but we would enjoy hearing from you again, probably. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Let's go. Uh, let's go right into cinemas with these guys. Cinemas. I just can't. <laughs> oh, good uh, lord. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. I feel that all the way in my gut, man. That's just a straight good belly laugh right there. Oh, uh, I hope they don't take that off ever. I hope we're allowed to use that for all time. Oh, That's fantastic. That would be amazing. Woo, good stuff. All right, we have a doozy today for Cinemize. And um, it's one that I don't know if we'll be able to really ever nail down 100%, uh, but we can we can at least try. Give her a go, ski. Uh, so a little bit of backstory real quick, and then we'll get right on to it. Uh, whenever I was in high school and early in my college years, uh, I was kind of the little hipster and uh, a <laughs> before nerd. Before hipsters were hipsters. I, it, it's true. A hipster before it was even a thing. Yeah, that's true. Um, so... I loved the movie High Fidelity. Uh-huh. Loved it. And uh, John Cusack, fantastic. Jack Black's in there. Tim Robbins, just just a fantastic movie. Stellar cast. Stellar. And uh, a decent flick. And uh, eh. one of those movies that when you go back and watch it, it's not... Doesn't hold up. No. It, it, was, it was popular with me for a reason. Yep. Because it was a very specific time. Uh, but one thing that he does throughout the movie, and it was actually based on a book, uh, he lists top five things. So he'll do top five albums. They'll do top five songs. They'll do top five movies. All all these different things. And one of one of the other top fives that he does is a desert island. And this is the idea is if you're on a desert island and for some reason you have a television and a DVD player for whatever reason on a desert island, um, what is what is the five movies you would take with you to watch over and over <laughs> and, and over, over again? And you can only do five. So we got electricity on this island? <laughs> Apparently we have electricity, but there's no way to get word to another island or the mainland because you only chose one app, and unfortunately it was YouTube. <laughs> so you're well, limited. Well, I chose the, the, <laughs> I chose chose the, the browser. browser. <laughs> so joke's on you, sucker. I wonder, I wonder if you only had a web browser, how would you get word to the mainland? AOL Instant Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that would be that would be a cruel joke that you do have electricity and internet, but it's AOL dial-up and they oh, don't God. give you a CD. <laughs> 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 yes, we're old That'd enough rough. to remember the days of dial-up. I will aim. Yep. Yeah, I'm old, old enough to remember uh, having to tell my mom to get off the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as she picks up the phone and starts to dial, there goes your internet connection. Yeah. No, it's just gone. Yep. Yeah. Crazy days, man. Instantaneously gone. Whiskey, laudanum, saw. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if you only had five movies and that's all you had for the rest of eternity, well, the rest of your short life on this desert island. Yeah. What would you pick? Oh, my God. It's tough. Like, I, I was thinking about it, and I know there's two for sure that I would take. For sure, for sure. Okay. And the rest of it, I don't know. Like, there's <sighs> there's benefits and uh, and not so much benefits to, to all the rest of them. I don't know. I don't okay. Know. I'll give you my two for sure. Okay. Lonesome Dove. Okay. I know that's no surprise to you. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And, and The Quiet Man with John Wayne. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those two movies. For reals? I, yeah, for reals. For sure. Bro, I feel like you got to, 
you've got five choices. <laughs> you got to broaden the horizon. I'm just saying for sure. Those are my two movies. You that, can that... get that shit on VHS. <laughs> I know. I'm very much aware. As a matter of fact, I've watched you have them it on, on VHS. <laughs> I own them right now. I do not own a VHS player, but I, uh, I do have those. I also have the Braveheart double edition set. Oh, good grief. <laughs> and I know exactly, I can tell you exactly where the movie cuts off in Braveheart you gotta to switch swap. to the other VHS. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. And I also had that little race car uh, rewinder. <laughs> so you can take it out. Stick it in. And you can put it in a rewinder. Be kind of rewind? <laughs> yes. Great movie, by the way. No, it was not. <laughs> it was not. It was not. It was a ridiculous abysmal. movie. Definitely one you should watch if you haven't seen, though. You could probably YouTube it. Uh, go to your local Blockbuster. <laughs> they probably got it there. I bet they do. I bet they do. What 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 came up in your mind? Oh, man. And actually, it's it's one that we talked about uh, last week, and I'm sticking true to it. Shawshank Redemption. All right, all right, all right. definitely in my top five. Okay, um, I I would have to say, and I know you're gonna razz me for this, probably. Willow. Yeah, definitely gonna razz you for that. It's I, not even a movie. Uh, bro, it, it's a glorified television show. Uh, it beats the hell out of Lord of the Rings. You're out of your dang mind. That's, no, that you can't even. We got the whole. Make. We got the whole travel story. They threw the ring into Mordor <laughs> in an hour and twenty. Yeah, but stuff happened in between. Yeah, fighting and <laughs> all that. There was there was good action the entire movie. What what does Willow bring to the table? With the exception, oh, that's of, what I was talking about. Was Willow. <laughs> With the exception of Val Kilmer in a cage at some point, like there's nothing to it. It's literally the travel that you were looking for. <laughs> oh, it is <laughs> literally the travel. They were escorting Alora Dana to Tiras Lane. Okay, I mean, I get it. I, I just don't know why in the world that would make your top five of all time movies. I I I love the movie. It's, I don't know what it is about that movie, but I have always loved that from the first time I watched it. It just it is it's it grained itself into my my being. You loved it so much. I literally named my daughter Elora. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's a great name in spite of it being a will. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So we'll go with that. Okay, so those are your two for uh, sure. Oh, oh, I've heard. I, I've got most of my for sure, I believe. Okay. All right. Well, you got two. You want to go on? So, yeah. Let's uh, numero trace tombstone. All right. I could see it for sure. One of very few Westerns that I've seen that I actually enjoy watching. And it takes you up to two Val Kilmer movies. I'm telling you. The old Val. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> arguably tombstone his only great role. Well, that shenanigans crushed Mad Mardigan. Oh, come on. Compared no, you know what? I'm not even getting into that with you. We already we already, we already fought about Willow. We're not even fighting <laughs> about that. All right. So my number three is the Big Lebowski. Oh, damn you. And I imagine it was on your list too. Yep. But I, I just it's one of those flicks that every single time I watch it, something else comes out. Yep. And the Coen brothers, gosh. I mean, they did it upright. It was good. That's good. It was a goodie. And like we talked about last week, it's one of those movies that the cast, as great as the flick is, the you cast can't carries eat it. it. No, it's fantastic. Steve it's, Buscemi. <laughs> yes. John Goodman. Yeah. And and John Goodman in his in his ultimate prime. Yes. Uh, and and probably one of the most quintessential roles that he's done. I don't know. I, I really think that his defining role was the uh, exterminator in arachnophobia. <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> well, that's a good role for sure. And I still hear the music. Every time I see him, I still hear the music from that movie. <laughs> oh, shit, that's not even the song. That's the song that plays in my head. Well, I don't know what movie you're watching. That wasn't it. <sighs> No, Arachnophobia is is a goodie. It is. It's a great movie. It's it's not in my top five. Definitely not. 
definitely not. It's one of those once a year type flicks. Yeah, you could probably yeah. handle it. Once I, a year. I gotta watch it with the wife's God, she won't do that one. She won't do that one. Oh no! See, I'm terrified of spiders. Terrified. Yeah, I, I, I don't like them at all. Uh, when I was, I saved your life earlier. Tonight. You did, and it was an ugly that was spider. A beefcake. It was. <laughs> I don't know what his deal was, but I'm pretty sure he had a knife in his waistband, <laughs> and I did not like it. So I'm glad you took care of that for me. Uh, when I was growing up, I had my little sister kill the spiders in my room because I, I couldn't do it. I believe it. Yep. Terrifying. Yep. yep. Absolutely terrifying. And she still calls me out for that crap on Facebook. <laughs> Not nice. Not nice. Well, it will happen. Sometimes. All right. So we both got three. I've I've got four, technically. All right. Because Car- you we both we both share the big Lebowski. Okay. All right. Both share so, the big Lebowski. What's your four? Okay. Sub question. Uh oh. Can I include a series? Or no. They have to be standalone films. Standalone films. See, that changes everything. You only got four discs. Oh, you only have four discs. What if they're like mini movies? <laughs> 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 no. No mini movies? Dang. Um, I'm going to throw in, it's going to come out of left field. I'm going to throw in a river runs through it. I honestly thought about that one. Then I remembered I really didn't like the movie. How how do you not like that movie? I just could not get into that movie. Gosh, the movie's got everything. It's got everything. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt Damon's not in that one. That's yeah, Legends of the Fall. But I don't know, man. It's just Fly one of those. Fishing. Yeah, so it's just one of those classics. In the riffer. <laughs> in the riffer. Now. Do we owe it to ourselves to include a comedy in the five movies? Because it didn't it didn't branch into my brain to include a comedy at first. I went through like twenty movies to try to start picking things out. Uh huh. Uh huh. And there wasn't a single comedy in the lot. Interesting. So I wonder if we if if that was going to be the case, where literally you had five movies, if you'd want a one re- of each genre. Not even one of each, but at least a comedy. The good ones. Like sure. like a run, Ronnie, run. Oh, you dirty dog. I, I'm really thinking about putting that in number five. All right, I'll tell you what. If you put it at five, I'll do it. <laughs> so both of our islands, when they find us years from <laughs> We're now. We're going to have two copies of Run, Ronnie, Run <laughs> and two copies of The Big Lebowski. Ironically... They're the only two copies of Run, Ronnie, Run in existence. <laughs> would would the Big Lebowski not be considered a comedy? That's a good point. I, I don't consider it a comedy, even though it has its hysterical moments. Sure. I don't think I consider it a comedy. I mean, granted... Documentary. <laughs> <laughs> on the life of Lebowski. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were all hoping for Little Lebowski to show up, but yeah, uh, that yeah. just didn't happen. I don't know. I, I really think, I really think I'd have to add, run, run, run. Eh? Yeah, I do. I love it. I do. I too. love the choice. I think, I think it's ballsy because there's a lot of other films to put in there. Yeah, but I, I think, I think I'd need it. If I can't go, if we're both on the same island, we're on the same island. If we're on the same island, Can you're we gonna share movies. You're gonna bring Run, Ronnie, Run. I honestly want to bring Princess Bride. All right. All right, I'll let you. Cause that's that would that would round out. No, no, no. Here's, here's I here's, take that back. Here's my problem with that movie. It always feels to me like it drags. Like the <sighs> beginning is brilliant, and the ending is brilliant. Yes. And for some reason, in the middle, I lose it. I don't know why. Huh. And I've, I've spoken to a lot of people about it. Interesting. And very few people feel that way, but. For for whatever reason, it just feels. I do want to change it. Oh, we're gonna change. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to do the Princess Bride. Brilliant movie. It's probably number six. Okay. If I'm able to keister one, okay. I'm gonna throw that one up. Fair. I'm gonna go three amigos. Oh man. I literally just watched that like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> that is another thing that's kind of unfair. Like it's always gonna change. You might have your two or three that are going to stay consistent, yeah. but it's probably always going to change a little bit. So, 
caveat, let's say, let's say we can't both choose the same movie, so we got to choose one more for the Big Lebowski. I'll let you choose since I, since I chose over you bogarted the, it. Run, the run Ronnie run. <laughs> um, so my other thought was, and, and you won't like this. You won't like this. Yeah, I don't like it already. Yeah. Uh, my other thought was Sands of Iwo Jima with John Wayne. You know, I'm not opposed to that one. I don't know why, but it's not a great movie. The acting subpar, the storyline subpar. It's it's a great American flick. It was also made in like the 60s. Yeah. I think it's a nostalgia thing. It'll give me something black and white to watch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. So I was thinking about that. I would use that movie as a, uh, you know how plasma TVs and, um, oh, I think, I think the LCD screens used to do it. They had that little screensaver that was just black and white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would basically wash the screen to make sure um, images weren't burned onto it. Right. That's what I would use that movie for. Hmm. Just as a, a constant just, playing just, in the background. Yeah, just play so that way it doesn't burn <laughs> anything into the TV. We can keep the resilience of the TV <laughs> and uh, keep the picture clean. Yeah, well, not to mention all that sand that's out there. Well, no, we're not in Iwo Jima. Oh, we're just on a desert <laughs> island. Just on a desert it island. It doesn't have sand? Nah. Don't they, nah. All, don't they all have sand? Nah, it's a rock island. Oh, Galapagos. Okay. <laughs> Do we have lizards at least? Of course. What do you all think right. we're riding on? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Noise. Noise. All right. So uh, I enjoyed Cinema Eyes. I enjoyed it too. If you guys got a top fiver. Yeah. And I, I know for a fact there's some of you out there that are literally clutching pearls right now because you can't believe <laughs> some of our Some, some of our, of our choices. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, that's to be fair. It is fair. I know for a fact that we'd get out there and we wouldn't even start any of the movies and we'd look down at our five selection and think, Dang What it. are we doing? What in the world were we thinking? And uh, BC's, what are you dipping into the cooler again? Yeah, I had to... Had to refresh. Had to refresh. Grab a little palate cleanser. Okay. All right. Well, don't tell us. We'll uh, we'll deal with that another time. Okay. So, uh, cinemize top five desert island movies with a bullet, over and done with. Yes. Very nice. Well, let's go on and uh, thank you, blinders. Thank you, blinders. I love every time I hear that, <laughs> and I take a drag of the cigar and let the smoke slowly go up. It seems to fit very, very well. Real noise. Real noise. All right, so thank you, Blinders. This is a way for us to kind of give a question to each other that we have no prior knowledge to. I select a question for BZ. He selects a question for me, and then we ask it and uh, just see where the conversation leads. So uh, I'll let you go first today. All right. So... I feel like this could be a pretty good conversation. Um, hence why I picked it for Thinky Blinders. That's a good one. Is it realistically possible for the U.S. to cost-effectively stop consuming crude oil products over the next few decades? That's it? That's the question. I would say the immediate answer is for certain... No. no. <laughs> For certain. Now, is it possible to wean? Yes. Should we? No. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, here's... I'm a West Texas kid. We grew up around oil and cows. Yep. So, it's kind of in your blood, right? Yep. Now, I've been around a lot of liberal people, and I hear the arguments, and I get it, I understand... Let's set aside the, the possible connotations with climate change. Okay. Let's set it aside. For now, let's go back to the reality of weaning ourselves or getting rid of oil products. I think a lot of people don't think about what oil is involved in. Everything. Everything. It, it literally, literally, 
literally. Literally. <laughs> uh, there's, I, I, I can't think of an industry that doesn't use an oil product because all plastics yep. are oil-based. Every lubricant is an oil base. Every, every, every transport is involved in some sort of oil-based industry. Yep. The tires on your vehicle are involved in an oil-based industry. Your cosmetics, your medications, your food, everything. Sure. Is, is based in some form or fashion. With an oil product or byproduct. And I just, I don't see how you get there quickly. Now, it's possible, but I don't see it quickly. So let me ask you this. this and this isn't part of the question, but this is just an idea that I'd kind of been tooling around with in the head. What if we were to do a, a weaning, okay. like I mentioned, and substitute? Oil products with hemp products. Okay. Because isn't there like uh, nylon? Nylon is produced with oil, right? Because it's it's got, uh, isn't that like a plastic? I believe so. I'm kind of getting into the realm of talking out of my butt because oh, I, I don't really know. I would assume so that all of the polymers, yeah, polymer. So yeah, it's got to have oil in it, I, I, right? I would assume so. But, so, you know, the, hemp. I would say hemp's an amazing plant. I don't think it's capable of doing all of the stuff. No, no, no. And, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying we get to the point where we just we shun oil, okay, as the redheaded stepchild. Because it has and will always play a role in development. But I do feel like there are avenues that could be approached to substitute and kind of take the place of oil. Most certainly. But, and and him being the biggest one. Maybe. Maybe. Because. There's there's other oils. You know, there's oil from, from a variety of seeds that we use now for cooking and, and other things. Like would you, uh, sunflower? The sunflower or? oil. There's the canola. Uh, there's oil from cottonseed. There's rapeseed. There's um, not like that, uh, just the plant, rapeseed. There's there's peanut oil. Oil is in, in certain forms in a lot of different things. Yeah. But petroleum products, I think it's just so widely used at the moment because it's cheap. Cheap. It's reliable. And it's readily it's easier, available. It's easier to manufacture than it is absolutely oil products. And now we can get into, and we may not we, we may not want to spend the time, but you also have to factor in the government subsidiaries, not subsidiaries, subsidies. Okay, for oil manufacturing. That's one of the reasons our gas is so inexpensive. Is because the government subsidizes oil, just like they subsidize solar and wind and everything else, because people want and need and crave cheap energy. Yep. And so the government subsidizes that. So we pay for that with our tax dollars uh, because that's what we choose to use. If you start stripping all of those things back, then the playing field opens up to competition and innovation. And when you have competition and innovation, new things tend to happen. So you're saying monopolies are bad? Yes, I am saying that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But at the same time, the change has to come. In in my mind, I'm a libertarian, and so I believe the change can't come from the government. The change change has to come from from private enterprise making changes. Okay. So in order to – let's just take the oil versus quote-unquote renewable energy. Okay. That change has to be cost-effective by people who want to invest in those – those areas. Nobody's going to invest in solar if there's no way to make a living. Right. And which is which is funny about solar is you still use quite a bit of oil products to produce solar panels. Most of it. 
Well, and, then, and, and, and wind, then, wind energy is even worse. It's it, yeah, yeah. And it you, it takes. I think the last thing that I read was it was about seven hundred and fifty gallons of oil a year. It was either a year or a month for a wind turbine to run one, one right wind turbine. Not to mention what it costs to manufacture it. Yep. It's all fiberglass. Ship it. To ship it. <laughs> and then and then on top of that, to get it maintain where it needs it. to go. To maintain. I mean, you just can't get away from from something that's so cheap and reliable as as oil, as petroleum products. Yeah. I okay. agree. The other side. Ethically speaking. Now, we're we're pausing on the climate change, right? And probably won't get there. But let's just say you're sitting on your, your vehicle has a full tank of gas. Okay. You're trying to get across the country. And you start driving, and you, you stop, and you still have a half a tank of gas left. Okay. And then you start walking instead. Okay. I don't know how much oil we're sitting on. I don't know how much oil is left. But they've been telling us we've been running out of oil since the 60s. Sure. Okay, so we're not. Not, not by a long shot. Because so they keep finding pockets. Yes, big pockets. <laughs> and, and new ways to, to bring it up. Well, it would be more effective refining it. Correct, correct. And is it ethical to sit on such a huge resource and not utilize it? To let it literally rot? Literally rot. To, to completely and totally rot go by further. the wayside. Right. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> you know, even even ethically speaking, I, and you say, well, I, I, I don't want to burn the oil for the environment. Okay. Even taking that into consideration, what if, what if you don't burn it? What if you still use it in plastics and you still use it in all the other things that oil encompasses? <clears throat> all your manufacturing needs. Absolutely. And then another question. How do you get those manufactured products to where they need to go? Well, that, that's a huge one. What about food? Yeah. We have these huge agricultural compounds that can't exist without petroleum products. Yeah. How are you, you going to feed everybody? When people say, we need to, we need to stop using oil. Or it's we need, asinine. Well, it's too simplistic. These questions are way you, more complex. You can't not not <laughs> use oil. Well... I mean, eventually, I guess you could, possibly. When the technology reaches it, but you're going to have to have oil to build the technology. Yes. Because that's on all of your computer parts. So, no is the answer to the question. (laughs) (laughs) No is the answer to the question. That's why why I picked this question, because I wanted to to see some some interesting thoughts on... uh, what what is a a very divisive? Yes, yeah, for sure. Uh, topic, but just like everything, literally everything, literally, it's divisive because we simplify everything so much. Uh-huh. Where, where we have our camps. Yeah, I've got my side, and they've got Tribalism. their side. Yes, and 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 there, there there's so much more to that, uh-huh. and the complexity of the issue doesn't lend to well, you're right and you're wrong. It's it's way more than that. Correct. So, but but the question is a resounding no. I, I don't think there's anywhere to get there in 20 years, 30 years, okay. 50 years, probably even 100 years. Um, would I like to? Yes. I'm all about it. Uh, but no, I don't think it's possible. Still waiting for that perpetual motion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where's Da Vinci when you need it? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, where's the Da Vinci of our time? Besides, oh, uh... Oh my gosh! I can't believe I forgot his name. It's embarrassing. Elon Musk, and he's going to shoot himself to Mars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to he's Mars. Like I'm out here. <laughs> it's probably the right move <clears throat> at this point. All right, so good, good. Thank you, Blinder. Well, I'm I'm glad you liked it. Mine's not nearly as good. Yeah, uh, um, they can't all be winners. Ethical question for you. Oh, boy. Ethical question. (laughs) This will be fun. I know your immediate answer. I know what it's going to be. Okay. And you're going to know your immediate answer. But think think through. Think it. Thinky blinders. Thinky blinders. Think it through. Okay. You have a friend that is a... And you you like this person. It's not a person that that aggravates you. 
staunch vegan. Like, and he's a friend, a, a good friend, like a good friend. How? I don't know. I don't oh, know. Oh boy, staunch vegan. <clears throat> how okay. much? How much do you roll back your meat consumption while in front of your vegan friend? Or at all? Question. Okay. <laughs> Does said vegan friend have oppositions to me consuming meat products? Yes. Heavily? No. Uh, how would you say just worried about you? Worried about me? Yeah. yeah let's see. He thinks veganism is the way to go and... That's the way he's smoking that hippie crack pipe. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. But, uh, you know, <laughs> how many uh, smoked uh, churkins that you've consumed uh-huh. in, the past, <laughs> in the past month? And uh, he's concerned about your well-being. So he's well, trying to, you know, evangelize a little bit. Uh, I mean, good on him. And I will try his tofurkey or whatever that nonsense <laughs> is called. I mean, I'd try it. I'm... Dude, I don't have this beautiful figure from not trying food. So I'll definitely try all of it. That's a shape. That round is a shape. Yeah, it's a shape. Most <laughs> certainly. <laughs> I'll try everything. I mean, if I like... Yeah, and I'm not going to say... Here recently is funny because I've actually gotten to where I'll crave salad. Yeah, that is weird. Like, just... And it's probably just because it's a Caesar salad. And I'm pretty sure it's the most unhealthy salad. <laughs> So it's not the salad you're craving; it's the all the dressing and salt and pepper. No, not necessarily. It's just pepper and croutons and chicken. Oh. <laughs> and so all the things that aren't salad. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's leafy green shit that I push to the side, <laughs> and then you got a pretty good breaded chicken sandwich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Toasted bread. I mean, it's already coming on little crusted toasted breads. <laughs> that's good. That's good. But, oh, man, that's that's a decent question, I suppose. So, immediate, How did we become friends? I don't know that. I don't know that. I'm not, I'm not uh, experienced in your uh, your your My friending. social realms? Yeah. Um, okay. The, the, the immediate answer is, well, of course I'm going to eat meat in front of him, right? I mean... Well, I'm, you know, no, initially when you read the question, I was like, well, I mean, I would, I would try and accommodate. Would you? I would, most certainly. Okay, so if. Now, if, if I invite him to a barbecue. Yes. So, hey, come on over, we're having a barbecue. And he's like, oh, I would love to come, but only if you do uh, uh, cauliflower. Okay. He's like, oh, well, so you're not invited then, basically. <laughs> You're saying you, you just uninvited yourself you're saying to this party. You, you wouldn't buy him a head of cauliflower just to make him happy. Oh, I'd smoke the shit out of it. <laughs> You'd smoke some cauliflower head? I, it probably <laughs> tastes like garbage, but I'd smoke it oh, for we him. Could, we could try it. What you if, know what? I tell you what. Let's do that next time. We're next time we record at the, the doghouse. Dog house, we'll smoke a head of cauliflower. It sounds terrible. It does. Really does. Could be really good if we soak it in enough butter. Okay. All right. We're gonna get there. A now little vegans bit later. can vegans do nope. no butter. Nope, no butter. They can have so what do uh, they have? Like... They can have nut butter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just saying that. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> they can have uh, non dairy butter. Not what does that even so, taste like? I don't know. Margarine. Is that a real thing? Margarine. You can have margarine. Who's margarine? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. Oh, boy. Parquet. Parquet? <laughs> I tell you what, we'll do this. We'll do this as a challenge to to all of our fans. Okay. The next time we Six record, yeah, all, all two of you. <laughs> um, thanks, think, Mom and Dad. I think... <laughs> I think we lost Larry already when we started talking about vegans. I think, ah, he's, I well, think he's done. Uh, my wife, she has to listen. So, uh, <laughs> got at least one. She's going to be the one that seasons it for us. Oh, so. okay. All right. uh, yeah, we'll do this. We'll, we'll, we'll season up a, uh, a nice pecan rubbed. 
Gosh. That sounds awful. It sounds really bad. Uh, cauliflower head. All right, let's change let's change the context just a minute before okay. we get out of here because we're running along. Okay. What if he demanded that you accommodate a party I invited him to? Yes. What what if what if okay, what if you called him and okay. invited him? Okay. And he said, I'll only come if, and then laid out his demands. However acceptable or unacceptable those demands were, regardless. Oh. Did I tell you this weekend? (laughs) Sorry. It's actually not going to (laughs) happen. Hey, you know what you should do? You should throw your own party. Hey. Hey, how about you has a party next weekend? <laughs> because I got Todd Tom who would love to talk to you. Wouldn't change the thing. Three out Three of five, five stars. stars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think for me the line the line is is crossed when Well they demand. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So That's fair. I've got vegetarian friends. I do not have a vegan friend. I didn't know those still existed. I, I, they're out there, and they're and by the way, they're they're California. super unhappy online. Well, well, they don't have any nutrition. We sh- we should definitely do some <laughs> vegan questions in the future. Um, I love it. Submit some you know. vegan questions. <laughs> um, but I, I think the the problem arises when when anybody for any reason starts demanding something of you. Sure. And I think this would be the same thing. So even ethically speaking. I'll accommodate to a level that we feel like is acceptable. As long as you're comfortable doing it. Sure. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's the very same thing as having, um, how do I put it? Super Christians over. Oh, like, holy Shiite Christians. Yes, yes. Like uh, Catholic plus Christians. In, independent so Baptist Christians. So not Catholic light. Not Catholic light. This Protestants. Catholic, Catholic plus Okay, yeah. fair enough. So uh, these are the folks that, you know, they can't cut their hair. All the ladies have to wear skirts. Oh. You know, yeah, yeah. You know. Amish. Yes. Uh, I'll accommodate you to a point. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But not to the point of, yeah, I don't know. It, it Sacrificing get, something? My enjoyment? It gets weird. It, get, it gets weird real fast. Like if they come over and you're watching something that you consider very benign. Like The Simpsons. Oh, okay. And they say, well, we can't stay because you're watching The Simpsons, so you need to change that or we're going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not a dig on my parents because they, they didn't let me watch The Simpsons. Yeah, right? I was not allowed <laughs> to watch this. And I'll tell you one thing, too. I think I have watched two episodes of The Simpsons in my life. I don't overly enjoy it. That was one sh- like. The Simpsons came out and it kind of broke the mold. It's true. In a lot of ways. And then South Park came out. Oh, well. And my my parents found out about that one. They're like, oh, my. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they just staunchly said, negatory ghost writer. So we would just go over to our neighbor's house and watch it over there. Yep. <laughs> and it was... It's funny how that Phenomenal. happens. Phenomenal. I love that. And I just, I've tried to watch The Simpsons. I just, it, it's crazy. It's the same creator that does Futurama. Yeah, Futurama. I fantastic. love Futurama. Yep. That show is amazing. Yep. But his, his new show is not so great. Uh, what's his new one? I can't remember the name of it. Oh, that good, eh? Yeah, it's forgettable. <laughs> it's pretty rough. It's more artsy. Uh, I don't like it. Um, anyway, so good questions. I really enjoyed this. Good, thank you, blinders. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, let's get the crap out of here. Do it to it. It's been good. Yes. Number five in the books. Number five. I certainly enjoyed it. I tell it you what, is. Um, if you're still listening, I don't know why, but if you are still listening, we thank you. We do thank you. And uh, we hope you have a great week and enjoy it. And we will catch you next time. I do have a favor to ask. Yep. Yeah. If you would share some reviews, don't share reviews, write us a review on iTunes podcast. Like us. Like us everywhere else. That's a given. Leave us comments. Shoot us emails. But if you would, take some time. Leave us a review. 
Yep. Don't leave us a one star review, you Todd Tom. <sighs> don't do that. Oh, leave us a good review, even if you don't even like us that much. Give us a hand. We'd yeah. really appreciate it. Like feel one, good about yourself. One review. One. One. One review. One. <laughs> one review. <laughs> uh, we would appreciate it. We're so, gonna be. Uh, I mean, you could check us out. Stitcher. Yes. Spotify. Spotify. iTunes. iTunes. Anywhere you get your uh, podcast platforms. Yes. And if we're not on your particular podcast platform, let us know. Please, we will. We'll make sure to share it there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know on we'll social. Sh- we'll share everywhere, even though they don't they don't give us money. That's fair. Because I like it. No, nobody's giving us money. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's going no. to. I've sent a lot of <laughs> I've sent a lot of emails. Still waiting for McDonald's to get back with yeah, us. Yeah, seriously, I reached out to them on Twitter like three times. I mean, this is ridiculous. We've mentioned them every episode. Actually, we had it the last two. I'm pretty sure we at least mentioned chicken nuggets last time. Oh, that's fair. I think so. Uh, I think we call them. That one. I think we call them nuggies. Nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it counts, man. It counts. I mean, it's in there. Yep. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta put your name on it. We do, and we did, and we have. And we, we, s- we had, we we came, we saw, we conquered. Thank you. I try to, I try to loop them all together and say we sang. We we sang. We sang. <laughs> we sang. We sang. Okay. I am Pastor Pinewood. This and is, I am busy. And this is Fraternize with these guys. We're going to leave you with something a little bit different this week. We're going to have a new segment called... Ponder This. So, what we're going to do is end the conversation. Beds are just wireless chargers for humans. Huh. Huh. Who'd have thunked? Love you, folks. See you next week. Bye.